In Cyprus, record shattering temperatures are scorching both the land and the surrounding sea. The research team from the Cyprus Marine and Maritime Institute have invited us to witness the devastating impact of these heat waves on fragile underwater ecosystems. Warm seas feel great on a holiday, but for marine life, they can be devastating. As ocean temperatures spike for longer and longer periods, how severe is the threat to underwater ecosystems? And can we do anything to prevent the worst? Let's dive in to find out. The water here is bathtub warm. The visibility is not that good today. Normally it's crystal clear. What's obvious here is that the area is in trouble. Last year, this was a lush green gas meadow, a haven for sea turtles and stingrays. Now it's a lifeless expanse littered with the remains of once thriving sponges. We are a hotspot of rising temperatures, both outside the water, but also inside the water. And these increasing temperatures, which are becoming more intense, more prolonged and more high, they are obviously affecting organisms. And the worst that can happen to them is death. <laughs> they die. As native life struggles with rising heat, alien species from the nearby Red Sea are migrating in, further disrupting the ecosystem. Now, with increasing temperatures, we have a lot more new species that manage to pass through the Suez Channel in some way, and they find favorable conditions to thrive. And in many cases, these new species, they outcompete native species, they displace them, and they cause a multitude of problems. For over a decade, Cyprus researchers have closely tracked rising marine temperatures with special underwater sensors. We are now approaching the spot where we have uh, our data logger deployed. Recordings show that Cyprus's waters are warming year-round, especially in the shallows where life depends on delicate coral reefs. The team photographs the coral to document changes over time. Here you can see these are polyps that have deteriorated. They look completely dead. This is dead. The CMMI team is part of two European-funded research projects, Purify and Effective, studying the impact of marine heat waves on shallow reefs and seeking nature-based solutions to protect and restore seabed ecosystems before they are lost forever. We will try to collect some sediments, of course. By taking core samples of either the sediment or uh, the actual reefs, you can understand how the climate was in the past from the very bottom of the sample, and then you go all the way up to the core sample to understand how it changes through the years, all the way up to today. Sediment analysis reveals how heat waves affect population levels and other variables. Another thing that we do investigate in sediment is the mayofauna. Mayofauna is a small organism, and their biodiversity is really dependent on the temperature, nutrients, and other conditions. Many species could even go extinct because the water is too hot or the sediment is too hot or the nutrients have changed because of climate change and heat waves. The crisis in Cyprus's waters is just one example of a global phenomenon closely monitored by oceanographers at Mercator Ocean International in Toulouse, France. Dr. Karina von Schickman, a lead author of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change Reports, explains that these intensifying heat waves are one of the consequences of our planet's heat imbalance. Marine heat waves can occur because there are heat waves taking place in the atmosphere. So we have this interaction between the atmosphere and the ocean, and then the ocean is heating up, the wind slowing down, etc., favoring these conditions. We have seen in the last IPCC that it decreases in general for the extremes that we have higher intensities and also the frequency of these extremes is increasing. Marine heat waves, prolonged periods of unusually high seawater temperatures are spreading like wildfires across oceans worldwide. They threaten ecosystems, fisheries, aquaculture and tourism and can last for weeks, months or even years. 
In the Mediterranean, sea surface temperatures have been rising continuously since the 1980s, a trend expected to continue throughout the 21st century. To better understand and forecast marine heat waves, Mercator Ocean has developed advanced computer models implementing the Copernicus Marine Service, part of the EU's Copernicus program. We recall all the observations available, satellite, and what we call in situ, that is really fait en mer, avec des bouées autonomes, mais aussi avec des navires, avec euh, toutes sortes d'instruments de, de mesure. Et à partir de toutes ces observations, on va les intégrer dans une solution modèle. On fait une prévision pour les dix jours à venir et ça nous permet de savoir si dans une semaine, il y aura toujours une canicule marine au même endroit ou bien si ça va évoluer dans un sens ou dans l'autre. Et on publie des bulletins toutes les semaines pour donner l'état actuel. On a besoin de comprendre quelle biodiversité va être détruite de façon définitive, quel est l'impact sur nous, qu'est-ce que ça va changer ensuite sur les grands équilibres et comment surtout on peut éviter de poursuivre ce désastre qu'on qu a fait sur les océans. Scientists estimate that 90% of the world's remaining coral reefs could be lost by 2050. To foster reef resilience, the team at the CMMI in Cyprus is experimenting with coral nurseries. They place fragments of endangered coral species in a safe area, away from predators. The goal is for these coral fragments to grow in the protected nursery and later be transplanted to the seabed, aiding in the regeneration of healthy reef ecosystems. We follow the team as they lead us to a net platform suspended five meters below the surface. Here we are at the floating nursery. It's the first time we're testing these kind of floating nurseries in the Mediterranean for any species. We're going to uh, install the corals and we're going to monitor them for at least a year using photogrammetry and other visual methods. It remains to be seen how well these coral reefs will fare in the warming sea. Now it's the peak time of heat waves. We will continue deploying and installing more coral fragments on the floating nursery at different seasons to see how they will behave. We are by now certain that the sea will be different in 10, 20 years. We're making efforts to at least try to save some of the key species that support the rest of the biodiversity in the hope that the change that will come for sure will not be so bad or fatal on, on the marine uh, life. As the ocean keeps heating up, time is running out for many species facing a future they may not survive.